All right, we're going to talk here about adding and subtracting fractions, and we'll start with some easier types of problems, right? Um, so and I, I drew some visual aids here just to give you an idea of what we're talking about when we're adding fractions. Right, so here we have you know, a circle cut into three pieces. One of those pieces is shaded, so that's one-third. Here we have another circle cut into three pieces. One of those is shaded, so that's plus another one-third. So if we add those together, well, we have two of three pieces shaded, and we get two-thirds. Right, so one-third plus one-third equals two-thirds. Think about it like this. One apple plus one apple equals two apples. Well, think about it in terms of words. One-third plus one-third equals two-thirds. Right? Whether it's a third or an apple, if I add one, one of them plus another one, I get two of them. Right? So one-third plus one-third equals two-thirds. Right? A similar thing happens with subtraction. If I had nine trees minus six trees, that's going to give me three trees. What if I had nine-fifths minus six-fifths? Well, that's going to give me three fifths, right? It doesn't matter what word I am that I'm counting, whether I'm counting trees or apples or thirds or fifths. If I have nine of them minus six of them, I end up with three of them, whether it's trees or fifths, right? So visually what that means, right, I have two circles here cut into five pieces. Each one's cut into five pieces. Nine of those total pieces are, are filled in, right? So that represents nine fifths. If I take away six of those fifths, so let's take away one, two, three, four, five, six, that leaves me with these three here, right, three-fifths left over. So nine-fifths minus six-fifths equals three-fifths, right? So we can see from these first couple examples here that when we're adding and subtracting fractions, if those fractions have common denominators, if, if that, that bottom number is the same, then we just add or subtract the numerators, right? One-third plus one-third equals two-thirds, just like one apple plus one apple equals two apples. We're adding the same things together, so we just add up however many of them we have. Right? You can think of a third as like a, phys a physical thing. Right? A third is this amount of a circle right here. That is a third. If I have one third plus one third, I get two thirds. Right? Two of those pieces of that circle. Just like if I have one apple plus one apple, I get two apples. Right? Same thing with a fifth. A fifth is a physical thing. Right? A fifth is this portion right here of the circle. That is a fifth. Well, if I have nine-fifths and I take away six-fifths, I end up with three-fifths, right? So, when, again, when my denominators match, when we have what we call a common denominator, whether I'm adding or subtracting, um, I just add or subtract the numerators, the numbers on top, right? I have nine-fifths minus six-fifths, that leaves me with three-fifths, just like nine trees minus six trees leaves me with, six, or with uh, three trees. All right, so that's adding and subtracting fractions when we have a common denominator. We don't have to do anything fancy. We just add or subtract the numerators. All right, I'm going to pause the video, erase this, and put up some examples of what we do when the denominators don't match. Then it gets a little more complicated. All right, so now I want to add two fractions where the denominators don't match up and see how we can accomplish that. All right, so I have one-third, which I represented with the picture up here, right? The circle cut into three pieces. One of those is shaded, plus one-half. Right, so here's the, the circle cut into two pieces where one of those is shaded. And I can add those visually, like I can take that one-third piece and that one-half piece and put them together into one circle, and that's what one-third plus one-half equals, but what fraction of the total circle is that? Right? It's not like the ones we saw before where one-third plus one-third is two-thirds, because now I'm not adding the same quantities. I'm adding a third and a half. Those are two different things or two different portions of the fraction. I can't just add them together to figure out what it's equal to. Right? There's a way to figure it out, but it's not as simple as just adding a one plus one and getting two thirds like we did before. Right? So to figure out what that, you know, what fraction of that final circle there is actually filled in, I dug, came down here and kind of did the same thing. Here's my one third, here's my one half. What I'm gonna do now is use the other fraction to split this up further. What I mean is here's one third, this fraction is split into two pieces. So I'm gonna take each of these one third pieces and cut each one of those into two pieces. Right, so this one third on the right, I cut into two. The one on the bottom, I cut into two. The one over here, I cut into two. Right, if I take those one third pieces and cut each one into two, now I have six total pieces in that fraction and two of those six are filled in. Right, so one third is the same thing as two sixths. Right, and if you watch the video I did on simplifying fractions, you can pretty easily confirm that two sixths, when you simplify it, gives you one third. Right? Sometimes to add and subtract fractions that don't have a common denominator, we actually have to unsimplify the fraction to make them have that same denominator. 
Right? I'm going to do a similar thing over here for the one half fraction, for the one half circle. Right? This one, it was cut into two pieces. I'm going to go over to this fraction that was cut into three. I'm going to take each of these halves here and cut each one into three equal pieces. All right, so the one that's filled in on the right side, I'm going to cut that one into three pieces. The one on the left side that's not filled in, I'm going to cut that one into three equal pieces. And what I have now in this fraction is one, two, three, four, five, six pieces, and three of them are filled in. All right, so one half is the same as three six. And again, if you simplify three six, you'll see that that does equal one half. All right now. I have 2, 6 plus 3, 6. Since both of my fractions are in terms of 6, right? I'm, I'm adding the same chunk of the circle, that same size chunk of each circle. I have two of those chunks on this side and three of them on that side. So total, I have 5, 6 of the circle filled in. That's what I have up there, right? That one that I drew up there is actually 5, 6 of the circle, right? So 1 third plus 1 half equals 5, 6. Right? A common mistake people make when they're adding fractions is say, oh, one half plus one third. I add the ones and I add the three and the two and I get two out of five. Right? If you, if you understand what two fifths of a circle looks like, this does not look like two fifths of a circle. Right? Um, that's actually five sixths of a circle. So to add those fractions, what I need to do is basically unsimplify those fractions, get them to a common denominator, and then I can add them together, add the numerators with that common denominator of six. Right? And in this case, the way I did that was for the one third, I cut those pieces into two. For the one half, I cut those pieces into three, right? Using that other denominator from the other fraction to tell me how many pieces to cut these into, that made these denominators match up. Right? To do it mathematically without all the pictures and everything, um, I would go like this. All right? One third plus one half. Okay. So I got one third plus one half. I cannot add them because they don't have the same denominator, right? I'm not adding the same size piece of my circle, so I can't just put them together. So what I need to do then is create a common denominator. <clears throat> so what I do then is I look for the common multiple of 3 and 2, or in, in what we really want is the least common multiple of 3 and 2. What is the smallest number that both 3 and 2 will multiply into evenly? Well, that number is 6. So to change my 3 into a 6, I need to multiply it by 2. Now, I can't just multiply the 3 times 2. I also have to multiply the numerator times 2 as well, right? Because remember, 2 over 2, that just equals 1. So I'm multiplying that fraction of 1 third times 1. I'm not changing the value of the fraction. <clears throat> I'm just changing the way it looks. And then I do a similar thing with my other fraction, the 1 half. To change the 2 into a 6, I need to multiply 2 times 3. But again, I can't just multiply the 2 times 3. I also have to multiply my numerator times 3. Right, so the 2 over 2 and the 3 over 3, really all I'm doing here is multiplying by 1. Right, and that's a common technique that you'll see in higher level math classes. Um, when you need to do some work, and especially it happens with fractions, but it happens with other things as well, um, and it doesn't quite work the way it is and you need to kind of change the appearance of it, one thing you can always do is multiply it by 1 and just choose the one in such a way, in other, in other words, writing one is two over two or is three over three, so that when I actually multiply it out, what I end up with is, well, for this first fraction, is going to be two over six. The second fraction is going to be three over six, right? If I multiply across one times two and three times two, that's two over six. One times three and two times three, that's three over six, right? When I, when I multiply by that one <clears throat> and I write it in just the right way, it creates now fractions where the denominators are the same, and now I can add 2 plus 3 in my numerator and get my answer of 5, 6 like we saw up here. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so that's, like I said, a common theme or a common technique that you use in math is to multiply by a 1, but write that 1 in such a way of the same thing over itself so that it helps you to move forward in the problem, right? I can't move forward in this problem, the 1 third plus 1 half, unless I get those numbers to be the same in the denominator. To do that, I multiply by 2 over 2 and 3 over 3. That changes both my denominators to 6. I can move on. Right? And the reason we have to multiply both the numerator and denominator, not only are we multiplying by 1, which, again, doesn't change the value of a fraction, but like we saw up here, right, when, I, when I cut each of these three pieces into 2, that created the 6 pieces in that circle. Right? That was that 3 times 2, which gave me the 6 here. But that one piece that was filled in before, that get cut into 2 pieces as well. Right, so that 1 up there also has to get multiplied by 2. Right? It's not just 1 out of 6 here. It's 2 pieces out of 6. Right? Same for the, the 1 half. 
right? It was just one piece out of two, right? When I took that, those two pieces and cut each one into three, right? That two times three in the denominator gives me the six, but that one piece that I had filled in now gets cut into three pieces. That's why I have to multiply that one times that three as well, right? So hopefully that makes sense, you know, visually speaking as far as, well, why do I have to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by two? It's because when you split that up, you're not only splitting up the, the un- shaded parts of the circle. You're also breaking up the parts that you shaded in, which is your numerator, right? So you have to multiply the numerator and denominator. And mathematically speaking, you have to do that because you're just multiplying by one, you know, one half times three over three, that still equals one half. You're not changing the value of the fraction. You're just changing its appearance so that you can add it to this other fraction and get your solution, all right? Um, so a real important thing when you're adding or subtracting fractions, you have to have a common denominator. If they don't, you look for that common factor, you know, the three and the two have a common, or the common multiple, I should say, right? Three and two have a common multiple of six. You multiply each fraction, top and bottom, to, to create that common denominator. All right, I'm going to pause the video again and put up just a couple more examples for us to look at of uh, adding and subtracting fractions. All right, so I put up here a couple more examples of just adding and subtracting fractions. So the next one we have is five, six plus one fourth. And if you feel comfortable with this, you might want to pause the video and just try to do these yourself and then play the video again and, and see if you did them correctly. All right? If you're not confident, listen to me explain it and then you can find some more examples on your own to, to practice on. All right, five, six plus one, four. So I cannot just add these because they do not have a common denominator. So the first thing you have to do is find that common denominator. Well, six and four, if I just multiply those together, it'll give me 24, right? Which will work. Any common denominator will work, but there is a smaller number that we can use here besides 24, all right? And the way I'm gonna find that is by factoring my denominators, right? Six is three times two. Four is two times two, right? So we get five over three times two plus one over two times two, right? My least common multiple or my least common denominator is going to basically contain all of the factors that we have, you know, in our denominators, all right? So, my first fraction is a, has a factors of three and two, right? This one over here has two factors of two, right? So I'm gonna need a second factor of two over here. So I need to multiply this one times two over two, right? One over two times two, right? So this, this, this fraction has two factors of two, but it doesn't have the factor of three that I have over here, right? So this fraction I need to multiply by three over three, All right? So again, I'm looking for what factors do I have in my denominators I need to get all those factors together, but I don't need to repeat any, right? So since like, since there's already a two here, I don't need to multiply by this two that's over here. This already has a factor of two, right? Right, this one has two factors of two. This one only has one, so I had to add in another factor of two, right? This one has a factor of three, but this one doesn't, so I have to multiply in here another factor of three. And then if I multiply all that stuff out, five times two is 10, three times two times two, that's six times two, which is 12. All right, so I get 10 over 12 plus one times three is three in my numerator, two times two times three, that's four times three, which is 12, and we get three twelfths. All right, so basically what I did here is I, I unsimplified my fractions. Five sixths is equal to 10 twelfths, one fourth is equal to three twelfths, right? But I couldn't add them together when they were six and fourths. Now that they're both twelfths, I can add them together. 10 plus three is 13, over my common denominator of 12, so I have 13 twelfths. All right, so to add or subtract fractions, you have to basically unsimplify the fraction by finding the least common multiple of your denominators. All right, for this one here, 13 over 20 minus 13 over 15, well, 20 is five times four, which is five, well, let me just write that as five times four, minus 13 over 15, which is five times three. All right, so you can see here I have a factors of five and four, but I don't have a factor of three like I have in the other fraction. All right, so I have to multiply this first fraction by three over three. The next one has a factors of five and three, but it doesn't have a four. So I have to multiply the top and bottom by four. All right, so what I end up with is 39 over 60 minus, uh, what's that, 52 over 60. So I end up with negative 13 over 60. All right, I went through that one kind of fast, just try to get this video done with. Um, but again, adding and subtracting fractions, find that common denominator, unsimplify your fractions, make those denominators match, and then add or subtract them from there.